Welcome to Trina's Treasure Chest. Every episode, I will choose an old photograph from my personal collection. All that I know is the name that's on the back of the photograph. I have been collecting for over 20 years and my treasure chest is full. My goal is to put these photographs in the hands of the proper owners. I have been doing genealogy since I was 15 years old. I will research whatever photo that I choose as much as I can and present to you my findings. I just never know what I will find. Sometimes it's shocking, sometimes it's just normal. One never knows. So let's open the treasure box and see what I find today. Hey everybody, it's Trina here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're ready to do some research with me. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I picked this letter. It is post dated, postmarked 1943 in Cincinnati, Ohio. It is addressed to a Mr. Frank, hmm, somebody. Park Hotel in Monroe, Michigan. Now I can't make out his last name. As you can see, it's really <laughs> hard to read because of the cursive writing that they used. It doesn't say who it's from. It just says Grace Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, I'm gonna look inside to see if I can find the name, his last name. Hmm, this is gonna be tough because I don't think they would mention his last name in the letter. So I'm gonna have to use my deciphering skills, I guess. Let's see. My goodness, seriously, I cannot even read that last name. That's a shame. No, there's no indication in the letter either. That is too bad, you guys. Sorry about that. That's just gonna bother me now. Okay, how would I put that aside? And I'm gonna see if I can decipher that offline and then maybe include it in another episode. So I'm gonna choose, get the, grab the next one I chose, it's this one. That's a baptismal dress. And <laughs> can you tell without me saying the name if this is a girl or a boy? Before I look, I'm gonna take a guess. Hmm, this should be interesting. To me, I'm gonna guess a boy. I don't know why, I just look like, just my gut. Okay, who is it? Ah, okay, so it's Albert Sherwood Shankland. So I was right, aged four and a half months. Taken May 29th, May 27th, 1894. Hopefully you can see that okay. And location of this photo is Newton, Iowa. Albert Sherwood, interesting middle name, Shankland. So uh, not a common name, so I'm hoping this will be really easy. So place they might have lived is Iowa. Maybe I'll put in Newton as well. Hmm, there's a few of them. Okay, so I'm just gonna put Iowa. Let's see. 
search. Well, there he is. Uh, I think we found him because the first thing that comes up besides family tree, I prefer to look directly at the records first if I can. I always use the family trees like this as my last resort because <clears throat> as a researcher, I want to come up with my own research and see the actual documents for myself. I would rather do that than go to the uh, family family tree that someone has made. Uh, okay, so yeah, I would rather see the actual record. So here is US World War draft registration. Actually, I'm gonna go back. I don't wanna look at that yet. Because I I thought I saw his birthday. Yeah, that's him. Okay, I'll look at that. So Iowa and his birthday was 19, 1894, which really matches this birth date. Uh, not birth date, photo date. So I'm, yeah, and the Al Albert matches Sherwood Shankman, and those aren't common names, so I'm I'm pretty pretty positive that that's him. Well, this is exciting. So this little boy, if you could picture that, he got married and served in the war. I don't know if he served. Let me just check. This is his registration card for draft. Newton. See, that's further further evidence right there. Where were you born? Newton, Ohio. Uh, Iowa, sorry. Don't know why I keep getting them mixed up. So that really, that match is just a definite match. So he became a car inspector working for Chicago Burlington. Must be just the name of the company. He's married, and we have his signature. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's go to the second. No, that's another. That is another record. Okay, so let's see what we could find out about this guy. Well, it's always hard looking at the them as this, this age, and then looking at their death record. It really makes you think <laughs> about life. Now, okay, he died in 1933. And can't access the photo of this, the tombstone, but that's okay. He died in Ravenna, Buffalo, New York. He's buried at Highland Park Cemetery. His father was George Ellsworth Shankland. Let's go see. He's buried in, oh, here's a bio. Let's go and click on that. Oh no, I'm unavailable. Hmm, that's too bad, he has a bio. Let's click on the father. No, he doesn't have a bio. Darn. Let me try that again. Darn. So, maybe if I type it in myself, find a grave. Either. Let's 
Probably not gonna work. That is too bad. But it's not the end. I can find it elsewhere, I'm sure. Okay, so his father, George Ellsworth, mother, Nora Shankland. Sherwood Shankland. Hmm. It's probably related somehow, but we don't need to go there right now. So I want to know more about this guy. Let me go into stories. Sherwood Shanklin was actually a very common middle. The Sherwood was a common middle name going along with Shanklin, the last surname. I found a picture. That's exciting. This was taken 1929, which is only four years before his death. He died pretty young, I think. This picture, I'm sure, would be a great addition to anybody that's related to this gentleman. It's amazing the things you find. Brother, okay, that's Charles. This is his brother. That's his brother. Okay, so this is Virginia Clare, that's daughter of that's his daughter, according to this. Okay, I'm gonna go back and go into some census records just to see more. Oh, maybe I'll look at his father's picture. No, nope, that's just a tombstone. Nora, that's her, his mother. She was from Maine. There she is. So, Sher Albert's Sherwood Shanklin's siblings are Edith Lillian Shankland, Robert Lawrence, Charles Raymond, Catherine Louise, and Zola Carmel. Okay, now that is a really interesting name very different from the other ones. I wonder, although I can see that, let me see, her last name Lufkin, is that German? Let me just go check that out. Surname Lufkin. Hmm. Lufkin, this unusual and interesting name is of early medieval English origin. It's Lufkin, so that's actually a British name. I wouldn't have thought that. So you learn something new every day when you do genealogy. Okay, so let's see, Zola. Carmel. Where would that name have come from? Let's go check. I'm just curious now why it's so different. She was born in Iowa. Okay. See? Single. Adopted. That's why. So it looks like she was adopted. Albert Sherwood Shanklin's sister, Zola Carmel, was adopted. That's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Zola ends up marrying a gentleman named John Francis Alfrey. Now that's another last name I've never seen before. I like that last name, that's cool, Alfrey. So this, I wanna read this. Paris, John Alfrey. Oh, that's not their marriage, that's his death. Okay, he was born in Newton, Iowa. Iowa. His wife, no, oh, it's cut off. It's cut off. Let's see. Oh, let's go back to Zola. Zola Carmel. So she was born in 1908. Okay, let's find her death record. She died in 91 in Illinois. Okay, so I'm going way off track here. Genealogy always has a way of doing that, doesn't it? <laughs> I wanna know more about Nora. Okay, so she was born in Cumberland, Maine. Her father was William Lufkin. This is an interesting last name. So the mother is Mary Ann Lufkin the gooey poots. <laughs> so that. Oh. And here's Albert Shanklin's great, great grandmother, I believe. If I didn't get that mixed up. <laughs> wow. What is it with these old photos? They always look like they're missing their eyes. You can see that uh, the outline here, that's interesting. Let's zoom in there, ooh. That's uh, too close, too close. <laughs> anyway, so that's um, Nancy Patterson. And she was born in Ohio. To me, she actually looks she looks native and it's interesting i see that she was born in a place called tuscar was tuscararas huh i wonder if there's any native in there okay maybe poots is native indigenous i don't know her mother was irish So I was wrong, unless Patterson is somehow connected to some indigenous tribe. Let's just go find out. George Patterson. No, he was Scottish and he married a Hutchin. Let's see who she is. And she was Scottish as well, so. I guess she just looked, she had that look to her. Okay, so, if anybody out there wants this photo, I do sell them. Just email me at ancestrallegends at gmail.com. I will post it in the description below. Really nice photo. It's, uh, if you feel it, it's really, it's glossy, glossy really bothering me that I can't find I can't read that last name here if anybody can read it can you just comment below let's take a good look I see an M as the first letter but maybe it's an F okay yeah so if you if you have any idea what it is you can comment below thanks for watching everybody see you next time